when you just start a program, what happens is that uh, the shell will connect the uh, standard input, standard output and standard error file descriptor to the terminal. So anything you type into the keyboard of your terminal will reach the standard input of this command and anything the command outputs to standard output or to standard error will both be sent to your terminal or terminal emulator. It's also possible to pipe commands together by starting several commands in the same line separated by this vertical bar symbol also known as the pipe symbol and what does what that does is it connects standard output of command one to standard input of command two and standard output of command two to standard input of command three standard input of command one will be connected to the keyboard of the terminal standard output of command three will be connected to the uh, screen of the terminal. Likewise, the standard error outputs of all three commands will go directly to the terminal. So if command one provides an outputs an error message, this will not be fed into uh, command uh, two. This, these pipes here start all three commands uh, simultaneously and uh, commands usually terminate after they have received on standard input a end of file condition. Um, so this allows you to join functions together and this is a quite convenient notation. Note that this can be a little bit easier to read than for example the mathematical notation that some other systems uh, and programming languages have used for the same purpose. So if you use uh, function call syntax, then they normally get nested in reverse order where first um, command one is executed and then the output of command two, uh, or command one is fed into command two and the output of command two is fed into command three. And then you have to uh, provide additional arguments to these individual commands whereas in this shell pipe syntax <clears throat> you can write the argument immediately next to the command and then you see more clearly uh, where the output of this command goes to the next one in the pipe. Instead of a pipe, you can also execute several commands in sequence uh, simply by uh, separating them on the same line with a semicolon. So command one, uh, at, the, at first only command one is started. Once command one has uh, terminated, it gets disconnected from the terminal. Then command two is started and gets connected to the terminal when it terminates again it disconnects and then command three will be connected to the terminal. So for example if we uh, use the date command and the host command, date command gives us the current time, the host command looks up the IP address of this host here. This is a command line that whenever I send our system administrators some bug report where something didn't work. I send them basically the uh, copy and paste of a shell session uh, that not only demonstrates what the actual problem is but also provides some context information. So for example when exactly did the problem happen and from what IP address did I try to access the server and um, using commands like this I can very easily include um, this sort of context information into my bug report. I don't have to explain uh, these things separately. The system administrators know all these commands and can look up the relevant information on their own. It's also possible to do 
uh, conditional execution depending on the success of the previous command. Uh, so there's a kind of uh, logic expression shortcut. The, if you have one command followed by a double ampersand, then the second command after this double ampersand will only be executed if the first command has been successful. So this is very similar in the C programming language where the double ampersand is a logical end. And if the first uh, part of the expression was already false, then there is no point in evaluating the second part of the expression because the logical end is already known, the outcome is already known that it will be uh, false. Um, likewise, if you have a logical or and the first part is true, uh, then the uh, second part no longer has to be executed because the outcome of the logical or is already known. And those same symbols are used with similar semantics also in the shell, except that the uh, polarity of true and false is inverted in the shell. So the return value zero is interpreted as success or true and any non-zero value is interpreted as false. So if make returns success with a value zero, then f test here gets executed. And if f test here fails, uh, returns a non-zero value, then this command echo here will be executed. Echo is just a simple tool that outputs its command line arguments to standard output. It's also possible to connect standard input and standard output with files rather than with the terminal. And this is done with the greater than and less than uh, characters. So if you write command and after the command you write greater than file name, then the standard output of the command will be written into this file name. If you use a double greater than sign, then um, it will be atten appended to this file, whereas uh, a single greater than sign, in case the file already exists, then the file will be truncated to length zero and then will be rewritten from the start. If you want to send both standard output and standard error to the same file, for example, you want to uh, see in the file what went wrong, then what you can do is you first send standard output to the file uh, where you want both to go, and then you use the greater than ampersand notation uh, in order to redirect standard error. So this here says, uh, standard error, which is file descriptor number two, is redirected to wherever file descriptor number one is already being written. So ampersand n is basically uh, the file into which uh, standard output is already written. To feed standard input from a file, you use instead the less than sign. So these are the basic mechanisms for redirecting standard input and standard output. But for the advanced users, you can actually go a little bit uh, further. Uh, the shell allows you to open and redirect arbitrary file descriptors. So not only uh, standard input, standard output and standard error, but you can um, redirect, ad open and redirect additional uh, file descriptors. For example, here we read, we open file descriptor three and read it from an aux in file, and we open file descriptor four and write it into a file called aux out. And we also open file descriptor file for both reading and writing into this file. It's also possible, and this is particularly useful for shell scripts, to uh, connect uh, standard input with uh, the current file uh, so such that standard input 
uh, reads the next couple of lines of input uh, from the current file in particular in a, in a shell script and the way you do this is with a double less than sign so this is known as a here document because you can write the input of a command directly after the command and the double less than sign is followed by a string that marks the end of this here document so this tr command reads the following two lines until it encounters in the third line exactly the string on its own on a line that uh, was passed to the shell here uh, after this double less than sign. The, this particular tool here, tr by the way, is a tool for uh, translating characters um, so you can substitute certain characters with other characters and to use it you just provide two command line arguments the first one is a list of characters that are to be replaced and the second argument is a equally long list of characters that um, that will be substituted so for example here a capital A will be replaced by a capital N or a capital M will be replaced by a capital Z and the hyphen here indicates all the characters in between. <clears throat> this particular string by the way is a uh, simple encryption scheme uh, that was in use uh, a while ago on the internet if you post it on a mailing list for example a somewhat rude joke and you wanted to warn people not to root, read this joke if they are easily offended uh, by certain topics then you could scramble the text by rotating the entire uh, alphabet by 13 positions so in the alphabet modulo 26 you add 13 to each character and this rot13 encoding could be implemented using this these parameters for the uh, character translation tool. Another somewhat advanced use of um, file redirecting is you can not only redirect to files but also to network ports. The shell can open a TCP connection to other computers and you can redirect standard input, standard output, standard error and so on uh, to network connections. And to do so, you just redirect uh, to a pseudo file that doesn't really exist in the file system. It's just a file name that is interpreted for this purpose by the shell called slash dev slash TCP slash and then the host name you want to connect and the port you want to connect. And uh, using this mechanism, you can within three lines actually write yourself a little web browser. Uh, how does a web browser work? Uh, you have to open a connection to port 80 on a web server and then you have to send a command get and the name of the file that you want and because it's com uh, followed by the, the version of the HTTP protocol that's being used and because it's uh, common that many web servers under the same address actually answer for different websites. You also have to follow this with a line that provides the name of the website that you want to connect to. And if those two lines are followed by an empty line, then what an HTTP server will do is it will send you the file back. So what are we doing here? We use the echo command to um, send the first line then a semicolon the backslash here just make uh, tells the shell that our command line isn't finished yet it will continue on the next line uh, then we send another line here both of these we redirect to wherever file descriptor 3 is pointing and then after we have sent those two lines and the empty line we read with the cat command from wherever 
file descriptor 3 is pointing and all th these three commands we group together with curly braces and for all three commands together we redirect file descriptor 3 in a bidirectional way uh, to TCP port 80 on this host. This is my website on the uh, student-run computing facility where one can easily get a little personal web space. And if you try this little shell command, then uh, you should get a little C program that calculates how big A4 paper is as an example. Um, there may be some Linux distributions where this dev TCP uh, facility is disabled for security reasons, um, but on Ubuntu Linux this works out of the box. This is of course not the normal way of accessing web pages. This is just to show you a somewhat more advanced example of what you can do in the shell with file redirecting. The normal uh, shell command uh, or Unix tool for downloading a file via HTTP is known as curl. So if you type curl and then just a URL, then it will output to standard output the content of this file.